Okay, so now we're ready to actually do some file input. So we want to be able to read from a text file. Uh, for this example, I just modified my last example a little bit. Uh, and I created a comma separated values file. And we're going to see this here. Uh, I put that in the root directory for my project. Uh, so if you click on files on your left hand side taskbar, uh, you'll see the people database project and you'll see I created this file, it's just a basic text file, people.csv and in it I have comma separated values, first name, last name, and phone number. So let's now see how we're going to read from this file. So this is going to look very, very similar. You'll see some new stuff here, though. Uh, we need to use the file class. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new instance of uh, file. We'll call that input file. And that's going to be new file. And you'll see I have the name of the file people.csv. By default, NetBeans treats your project directory as the working directory. Uh, there are ways to change this. We're not going to go into that right now. Uh, you could also put that file elsewhere and specify the file location using a full path name instead of just the file name. Uh, but we'll talk more about that later. So we still have scanner in. Uh, but scanner in is now going to be an instance of new scanner and it's going to uh, instead of getting the input from system.in the console it's going to get the input from the file. Most of this is going to be the same uh, the while loop here is going to be while in dot has next as long as there's another line for us to read from our file this will return true if we run out of lines, if we hit the end of file marker, then it will return false and we're done reading from our file. So this time we want a top of tested loop because if the file is empty, we're not going to do anything. So much of this is the same. Um, our token that splits our uh, input is a comma in this case instead of a space. And we're going to treat this the same way. So if it's just first name and last name and nothing else, we'll allow that. If it's first name, last name, and phone number, we'll allow that. If there's anything beyond the phone number, we're just going to ignore that information. Um, so all that is going to be the same. Uh, and of course, if it's an empty string, uh, if there's blank lines in our file, then we're going to ignore those as well. Um, this is going to be the same, it's just going to print out the output. Uh, you'll notice here we've got a try clause and a catch clause. So when you're doing file I.O., things can go wrong. You could have the file that's not found, you could have, you don't have read the right permissions. Uh, in the case of reading from a file, uh, the one we have to watch out for is file not found more than anything else. So we have to put all our file input, reading from that file, uh, we have to put all that in a try catch clause. If the file is not found, uh, we've got this very unhelpful uh, logger line. Um, we'll talk about logger later. I'm not going to go into that right now. So what does the file look like? Well, it looks like this. We got three uh, lines. We got first name, last name, phone number. Uh, that corresponds to, of course, this, which we talked about in the last video. Now let's hit run. And it's going to go much faster because we don't have to type anything in. Just read three lines and it's done. Uh, so we took information from a text file 
we put it into an object, we essentially gave that information meaning, and now we saw how to do text file input. In the next video, we'll talk about text file output. We're getting very, very close to actually building our text editor.